Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how you can create this kind of a pattern. Um, this is actually a, another classic example. Um, you probably have done this at some point. How to turn this normal grid or whatever whatever surface into um, kind of a something that looks like this, where everything is kind of more or less um, has hexagonal in it. So the idea is actually quite simple. For any kind of surface, you just need to turn it, uh, you need to triangulate it somewhat. So we have like a triangulate modifier here, but you can use any kind of triangulations, um, even like a more procedural one. It's, a, it's totally up to you. Basically, if you have triangle and then you sub subdivide it, you will get something with hexagonal in it. Um, if I apply this and then go into edit mode and then kind of dissolving vertices with a with multiple edges coming in um, and then dissolve it. I think it's still limited dissolve or dissolve vertices. We're gonna get this um, hexagonal pattern and then by by doing that, we can turn it into something like this. So this is um, it's quite parametric, and then this is something that Blender um, and Spreadshop add-on actually really good at. I'm gonna restart real quick so we don't get funny crashing. Because I normally, I almost never turn off my MacBook Pro. Is a uh, and I if I leave Blender off for night and then. Um, and then using it right away with stretch off it tends to crash better to start fresh okay look so let's work with a uh, with a grid create mesh um, plane oh actually grid because grid give you all this uh, subdivision already and I'm gonna turn on wire and draw all this is gonna be a um, hexagonal pattern the the tessellation is always interesting um, especially if you're if you like procedural and you like uh, to deal with a generative pattern the tessellation of polygon itself is interesting. So grid is square, it's simple, it's but it's really also boring. But if you yeah, if you turn it into if you triangulate it and then subdivide it, and then whatever now if you if you tell your brain, okay, just look at the hexagonal and you get the hexagonal pattern over there. And then the idea here is uh to kind of use spare chalk to store the Store the original vertices because you look. Uh, you look at here. It's a. Uh, if I switch on and off, there are some vertices, which is the original vertices that we can select, and then. And hopefully we can. Just select all those original vertices and then dissolve it. I'm gonna show it to you real quick. I think Blender actually can select similar select similar amount of connecting edges see these edges these um, these points actually this is the original points and we can just simply dissolve the vertices and then we get the hexagonal that's uh, actually the, the main idea there are actually these uh, extra vertices that we don't need here but it's okay we can leave it for now okay so let's deal with this guy go to compositing Spread drop new. Gonna get a object in objects in. Uh, we're gonna have two of them. One of them with post modifier on. So same objects, but you see the difference is one is the original. You see the points there. I'm gonna actually use outliner 
and hide the original grid. So this is sourcing the same objects, but with a post modifier off. If I turn it on, I'm gonna get the points of the that's already being subdivided and triangulated. So yeah, so that's a different. I'm gonna have the original, and I'm gonna have the one after. Now there is a quick and easy way actually to achieve this kind of look. If you if you use um, list slicing, I think you can just um, you can just carefully select the points. I'll show you what I mean. You see, slicing actually slice the data. If we just get the data from 0 to 38 in the index, we're gonna get um, yeah up to 81. We're gonna get the original points. If I keep scrubbing now, I can see the new points being created on top of the original points. Now what happened is if I actually kind of slice, get rid of the original point up to 81 actually. I'm gonna get just um, the new points, right? With the new points, and then with the, if I'm not wrong, if I just plug in the edges there, okay, we're gonna get a mesh. Um, maybe we also need to slice the edges data. And if we don't doing it correctly, hopefully we get the result we wanted. Let me check real quick. I think the others. Maybe I need to mask. Maybe I shouldn't mask the vertices. I'm only masking the edges. That's one way we can do it. Yeah, I think this is probably one way we can do it. So keep all the vertices, but just selectively get the edges. And if I bake it, we're gonna get this guy. And this is actually just the edges. Polygon will be a different different matters. But with these edges, if you really want to do it this way, you can also just use a fill hole. So vertices and edges, vertices and polygon. You see, uh, yeah, it's kind of work. You're gonna get this. And of course, with having with this, um, you can just use a um, skin modifier. Skin modifier is really really fast and it's really good for this. It might not be so perfect if you're if you are doing it this way. Still, still, this is a uh, one way we can do it. Yeah, this is a little bit. It's a little bit weird. This is very uh, kind of dirty. Well, maybe this guy will look better. I think we, we need to do kind of like uh, remove doubles and kind of merging some of the vertices from this guy because it's so messy, this one. Well, anyway, we're not supposed to do it that way. The idea is to look at the original vertices and then find the closest vertices um, from the original points to the to the final um, to the current mesh and then kind of comparing the two and then get rid just get rid of those points that's kind of connected to it 
so how do we gonna go about doing that so again I'm gonna show it to you this is the one that we have at the moment after the modifier and then we have this guy I'll give it a different color red and then maybe bigger points you're gonna get rid the ones that's red color okay so let's have a think um, I think the idea is just using K3 closest vertices and then use the one with radius the radius let's give it a float number so the vertices will be this is the final vertices and then the check vertices will be this guy the one with less number and the result is going to be this blue color uh, purple color yeah. um, and now if I, I hide the red one we have all the purples because it's selecting it because the radius is probably too big if I make this smaller you see it's only selecting those vertices that's closest to the original vertices and this is cool this is exactly what we need um, we just need to do some kind of list masking or vertices mask vertices mask vertices okay vertices check vertices there this is the vertices that we will uh, this is the original vertices now the the thing with this guy um, it's expecting a mask and a mask is actually it's a true or false kind of list so we need we need a way to kind of mask the vertices based on this guy, KD3 close vertices. We, we already find out the vertices, what it is, but um, we need to pipe into mask vertices somewhat and get a true or false. Um, I believe that we can use just a group index. So at the moment, if I use the stethoscope and look at the data and check it out, okay those are the vertices that we need to get rid of okay in order to get what we want if I show real quick vertices plug in there and if we use the list slicing level 1 if we put in the number 4, 2, 3 and then 5, 2, 2 or actually this is probably should be 422 two, or 42523 two, okay those are the vertices that's closest to the original vertices before being subdivided and triangulated triangulated and subdivided so we need to get rid of these vertices somewhat and keep the others so we get the hexagonal so um, yeah, this is actually the tricky bit. Actually, I still have to think. So we have this list of numbers. If I use just a formula, or maybe list masking, list match, maybe list match. Now I wonder if we have a we need to do some kind of comparison so if we have like we have a number from index 0 until 1000 for example and you just want to get rid of uh, we want to compare it with this number from 4 to 3 until 
522 compare these two and then we want a list that's give like a true or false if the number exists then give it a true if it false give it if it, it doesn't exist just give false so this is like a um, kind of python task and here actually i'm stuck i need to do a little bit of more research really i'm not a programmer but sometimes um, i like to do it using nodes and then this is should be simple using scripting simple if you know how to program and i, I understand the logic and this you can use um, maybe script node that's one way to do it or i i kind of wanted to do it using stretch of nodes so this is a we are almost there we got all the the problem uh, and the solution uh, we don't want this kind of dirty look um, final look we want it to be like to have like a clean uh, clean final results and everything should be procedural so um, yeah I think I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna find um, do a little bit research and then maybe I come back to this or I just give the solutions as a uh, gist so I'm gonna give this gist before and after okay currently if you want to slice it and you get the hexagonal so that's uh, one way to do it anyway you want to do it in a way that you can you can use any kind of surface let's say you have like a the icosphere icosphere is made up all of these uh, triangles I want it so that if I subdivide it and bring it to stretch up I want to be able to select pattern select similar and then just delete um, just dissolve the vertices and get a hexagonal or I don't know something like something clean Some people call this like a golf ball problem as well. Um, what I think yeah, you can do it this way. I don't know. I think this is a still. I left you a little bit hanging here, but if you can turn this index into true and false if you know how please let me know down below in the comments uh, and we're gonna solve this problem together and I'm gonna give the final result as gist anyway so next time you want to do this kind of um, pattern it's as easy as plugging stretch of 